Hello, everybody on Zoom. Hello, everybody in person. I hope this is all working. Um, I am very, very happy to present to you three alumni who will uh, be introduced. I'll introduce one of them who will then take over and I will disappear. Um, Douglas Soltis is the editor-in-chief of Betakit, an independent Canadian tech publication and founder of Betakit Incorporated. He has spent his life writing about or working for Canadian tech companies. Importantly, he is proud to be a Hums and not J School grad. He wrote that, not me. We'll get into it. Uh, I think this is a special moment for me personally. I don't think I've been in this room for over a decade, so it's uh, the energy is high. But I think um, everyone here understands the value of this program, but then also maybe some of the uncertainty that you feel as students about what comes next. and. Uh, we're all in a position now to maybe spend some time giving back and talking about that to hopefully open up some opportunities and uh, honestly to get back in the lecture hall and crack some jokes about readings and stuff like that with you. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start with Amanda. Uh, okay, this is a lot, but pay attention because Amanda's done a lot of things. She is probably the most interesting person in the world. So we're talking about a Toronto-based cultural programmer, producer, and talent specialist. She holds two degrees, uh, obviously BHUMS and then a master's degree in art history from U of T. Uh, she has worked for at the Canadian Opera Company, the Art Gallery of Ontario, the Toronto International Film Festival, and then she spends her evenings side hustling um, with the renowned, important, underscored, Canadian Indie Opera Company uh, Against the Grain Theatre. Her career is always intersected with arts, technology, and education, which I think you're going to see is going to be a theme for the conversation today. Uh, and she is currently working for Shopify as a senior talent sourcer or internet detective, which I would hope would be on a business card because that is the smoothest thing to drop on someone yeah. uh, in any business circumstance. Ian is a project manager with a philosophy degree, which is super cool. Uh, his career is focused on digital education and skill development projects, mostly in the public sector, uh, where he's worked with various government ministries, national organizations, and universities. Um, he, his work has been featured by Apple and appeared in TechCrunch. I think everyone here should know one of those two things, but both of them are really cool. Uh, and then recently he joined Shopify, where he's helping build companies' technical education, work integrated learning, and onboarding programs. We're going to explain what all those words mean, hopefully. Um, he's also a versatile big man who can run an effective pick and roll. Uh, I've had uh, many wonderful experiences with him on the courts, both here at Carleton uh, and in the streets of Toronto. Um, okay, so that out of the way, I'll give you a little bit more about my, myself, that um, experience kind of other working for writing about tech companies. Uh, my career started while I was in university working for software companies in Ottawa focused on uh, something called the BlackBerry smartphone, which doesn't really exist anymore. Um, I was running digital publications covering mobile technology while in university. Uh, I happened to work uh, <laughs> directly beside Professor White's husband. Uh, he would kick me awake from sleeping under the desk when I was working to finish papers for her. Uh, and then I went off working for larger tech companies and now own my own publication. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, a career is always a, a function of what you previously did and how you can use that whatever you want to do next, right? Something interesting appears to you and you think about the skills that you've picked up, things that you've learned, and how can you market yourself for that cool opportunity that you want. So they really were looking for someone who was a native speaker to just proof their, you know, their exhibition catalog if they were an artist or like help edit their essays. And doing that, like that kind of core communications, reading comprehension, research work that you get in humanities, which trust me, a lot of people do not get mm -hmm. in other degrees to the level that you're getting it, was so valuable and very fun. I just liked helping them. And that led me to an editorial job at TIFF at the Toronto International Film Festival. And working in film, I learned a lot about just um, technology because everything we did had to be translated online. You know, like marketing was not just mailing people ads in newspapers, right? It was digital ads and newsletters. I learned about social media while I was working at the film festival too. Led me to a job at a national gallery, which then led to me working in opera because it all goes on, but basically, what you guys are all than just more than one thing you have lots of disparate interests mm -hmm. and what i think we're trying to say is that all of those disparate interests have intersections with tech because of the applications and 
products you're using, but the skills that you have now translate to all of those fields. Yeah. Like all of our personal interests intersected in some way with digital and tech because at this time in the, just say generally mid 2000s, let's be charitable to ourselves, uh, tech and digital was uh, enveloping every sector. So uh, those roles had to interface in some way with digital and tech and therefore just kind of became part of our career paths. We're not trying to say that you should turn HUMS into job training in any way. I think the beauty of this program is that it's not job training, to be honest, like that you get four years where you're just learning and reading mm -hmm. Um, and exploring ideas. Um, that's something that I miss, honestly, since having left it. Um, but that being said, I think that there are things that you do get, skills that you're acquiring here that honestly, I just didn't even know that I had when I left. Um, and it wasn't until I was in a workplace getting a chance to exercise those skills that I realized that, oh, I am a good writer. I mean, you're surrounded by writers that are all probably pretty good. Like, as, if you're in this program, and you've gotten through it, then you've come out a pretty good writer. Um, and again, because all your peers are also, you know, articulate, good thinkers, good readers and writers, you think that that's just kind of par for the course. Um, those are things that start to set you apart when you are in a workplace. Um, an ability to read dense text and articulate its, you know, like to distill it and re, you know, reconstruct the argument to somebody. Um, and you know, to Doug's question, like this is kind of what you do as a project manager. It's like working with different stakeholders on something that a business or an organization is trying to accomplish. Um, you know, being able to negotiate trade-offs between two different, you know, competing interests that people have. Um, how Argu can you arguing both sides to understand the yeah exa exactly exactly arguing both sides being able to consider that two things could be true at the same time um, again reconstructing an argument for somebody else and summarizing it really quickly yeah. um, you know understanding value and where you think value is right like if you have to direct you know a couple million dollar budget for example that you know if government wants to do something um, what should you direct the money towards. It should be something that's valuable. And, and again, these are things that I didn't even realize were skills that this program gave me. Mm -hmm. Do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, so, and just for context, right now, I work as what's called a talent sourcer or talent specialist for Shopify. So again, totally different from my other 16 jobs that I had in the last 10 years. But um, what I do is I, I work for the teams that hire people. And how we hire is how I think a lot of companies are hiring right now, yeah. the types of people they look for are how um, a lot of companies are looking. So um, again, look, like I, in Doug's, like the bio that Doug wrote, read, read for me, right? I said I was a project manager with a philosophy degree. A lot of project managers that I meet do not have philosophy degrees. They probably have commerce degrees. Um, and then maybe they got like a certification somewhere. Um, I have some certifications too, but again, I, I actually try to lead with that when I go into conversations. Um, and I think that, again, what you pick up here in this background, you can succeed not despite of it, but because of it. And I think it, it being, you know, again, being well read and having a bit of a different background, a different perspective makes you an interesting candidate to people. Um, again, it's good to balance that with, you know, like I say, I do have some certifications. Like it's good to balance that with things that do kind of show a prospective employer that you can do the skill, but um, I picked those up along the way, right? Honestly, the, the biggest thing is just you're good learners and you can learn those things as you need to. Like I, I always thought you had to be like a technical person to work for a technology company. Um, all my entry into tech came through the public sector. I was working at a university managing mm -hmm. projects that the government funded and those projects involved technology. I became more capable talking about it and working with it um, and working with developers and like building apps and websites and digital services for people. Uh, there was maybe some concern that you couldn't get in those roles because you weren't technical. I would say like the greatest tool that you probably have to be capable in whatever role you're looking to apply for is Google. Because most of the tools, whether you're not technically proficient, can be solved by Googling how to do something, watching a 30 minute YouTube video, and then, boom, you know whatever digital tool set that most people across companies in, in North America are required for mm -hmm. the data, whether it's like 
um, Slack, Zoom, uh, Trello, like just name whatever tool set, Salesforce, any of these things where you're like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not technical, I can't figure it out. What apps do you have on your phone? Those are skills on your resume. Yeah, totally. I'm not joking. How many yeah. professors had to learn how to teach online in the last 18 months and didn't know how to use any of that software, any of that keynote stuff? They learned it. They learned it in that moment. Someone taught them. Maybe you like helped them yourselves, but like every oh. app on your phone is a skill. Yeah. So how did I even get into a film festival? I didn't study film. I am not a filmmaker. Um, here's what I did have. I loved storytelling. Humanities equipped me with a, a foundational appreciation of also international storytelling, right? Not just the Western canon of stories. I understood um, religious texts and backgrounds and cultural nuances and mythology and symbol. And I could go into an interview with TIFF, just a, just a you know, intern editorial position, working on what was then called publications, like a magazine to promote and market mm -hmm. their year-round cinema. And in the interview, they were like, what, what drew you to the job? Like, you're, you didn't, you're not a journalism student, you're not an English student, you're not a film student. Why did you apply? And I said all the things I just said to you today. I was like, I love storytelling. I love visual media. I think it's really important that we are exposed to international storytelling to become more empathetic citizens of the world. I think a lot of people's projections of their own differences, racially, ethnically, religiously, could be solved by just watching more international films. So that's sort of what led me to them. TIFF is an amazing employer for just sharing emerging and established films. And I found the route into that building that I could most easily translate in terms of my skills, which is I'm a good communicator. I like copy editing. I, I like reading and researching. And if, you, if I don't have the skills you're looking for, I promise I can learn them yep. the way that Doug and Ian have very quickly and lie until then. Yes. So I, I don't know just, if that answers your just, question. Well, so there are kind of like buzzwords, I suppose, that you do start to learn what they are and you use them in your resume. Um, what about things like, like scoping requirements or yeah. coordination, things like yeah, that? Yeah, that's good too. Um, things that like any hum student prepping for a paper would just be doing naturally and not realize that that transfers from a paper to a PowerPoint. That's a good point. I mean, project management is basically about organizing work and understanding what work is there is to be done, right? And so when you're a graduate student, if that's what uh, we saw some hands when people said that's what they wanted to do, like being a grad student ends up being a lot more like a job where you it's very it's even more independent than what you have here as an undergrad and it's there's a lot more work to do so if you're not planning that out <laughs> um, you probably won't make it through those courses with your sanity intact yeah um, and so Doug's point like what I might describe as like planning and organizing a paper now like that's the language that I had when I was a graduate mm -hmm. now I would describe that as like scoping requirements yeah. That's my um, essay workflow. You can use yeah, exactly, yeah, like defining workflow. I have, I have one keyword, uh, and I think it's more reactive to the conversation around the college in terms of like what the business community is looking for, and there's or, or what the government is looking to finance in terms of uh, skill development for young people, and that would be like STEM. Uh, I think where you want to be, uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. I think where you want to be is pushing um, kind of the emergent conversation around STEAM which actually includes arts into the consideration because uh, scaling companies in Canada and US and elsewhere are realizing that they've maybe over indexed on very specific skill sets. And then uh, the people that they need to manage those teams of engineers. Who have soft uh, skills. Yeah, benefit yeah. Ent entirely from the arts. Um, I started to volunteer to learn how to do that work with a, a tiny indie opera company. They wanted someone to like tweet, you know, use Twitter. Turns out you seem to be really good at writing and really funny and know how to find great images or GIFs. So I pretended for the AGO that I did this full time professionally on top of my job at TIFF. I was like, oh, I know how to run social media. You can see from this very small in indie opera account. So when the AGO was posting a job for a community manager, head of social media, I showed them my portfolio and I said, yep, a lot of this is for one tiny startup indie opera company. But I promise you, I can run a full-scale institution social media accounts. Just let me try and let me blow your socks off. Yeah. And I think I was the least qualified candidate they had in their interview pipeline. I think they were interviewing people who had done social media professionally for at least a couple of years, because again, it was very nascent. 
2011 to 2014, wasn't a lot going on. But I, I was just telling them, like, you know, I studied a program that um, really made me understand visual media and storytelling and the historical context behind the art. Not just being able to, you know, use technical apps will help you when it comes to really explaining art online. So that's how I got the job was like, I'm a really good liberal arts graduate. Like, trust me, you want me in charge of like the keys to the car. Someone else will blow it. You know, they'll write, they'll write something wrong. They'll misspell it or they'll, worst of all, make like a cultural mistake when representing a, a piece of art. Yes. So the context that I was able to show them and like the research that I do before creating, you know, engaging posts, I think is what got me the job. And then I persuaded them to keep me on by just demonstrating my work. Yeah. So. In a lot of arts institutions, they will hire people with any background too. So unless you are meant to be someone that has a background in security software, you know, a lot of these jobs, they don't even exist yet. You know, like when we were graduating, that wasn't a job that I, I knew I would have in four or five years. Who knows what the job will be in a couple more years once you're all graduated too. But they will need people who can put context around what they do technically to communicate that to everyone mm -hmm. else in the yeah. world. Yeah. And everyone here in this room is capable of doing yeah. that fundamentally. Yeah, you read very dense, complicated texts, and that is so, so skilled. It's amazing how skilled that is. To Just to amplify what Johanna had said, recognizing that you are something now versus uh, focusing on what you will like need to become to be accepted in society is mm -hmm. a strong message that I would want to underscore, because I think all of you entered into the program for different reasons but it was certainly not in pursuit of that job training because the conceit of the program is that there's something more that you were taught here, right? Um, part, of, <laughs> part of that realization I think that we've all had in sitting in like a professional setting in the room and realizing that just being in discussion room and dis discussing ideas every week based upon difficult readings that you've done have put you miles ahead of everyone else in that room uh, who is hopefully like just trying to do their job. So Even a little bit of like wondering um, what the benefits of this degree is in the professional career. Like we are here to explicitly say you're awesome. It is like it is literally your um, like the ace that you can play not only in promoting yourself but because of what you've learned here. Um, and it took us years to figure that out. So we're trying to give it to you straight now. So, I so don't stress about, is my degree recognizable? Is it a Yale degree? You know, things like that. Or does it have a, a subject or a domain that, uh, you know, makes sense, like computer science or engineering or something? Um, what they're going to see is, are you a fan of the place that you're applying? Like, did you go there as a client or an audience member or a gallery attendee? Like, did you tell that story when you were writing your cover letter? Does it, do, you, do you explain how your other interests are relevant to the role? That's what I would focus on and like really building up those skills, soft and hard skills, more than like what is your CV in terms of your degrees and your education? Like when I look at early stage career people or like just like fresh students and graduates, I'm more looking about them as humans. I, I remember where I was and I go, what, what are they interested in? Do they know a couple languages? Did they volunteer somewhere? Um, I look at their whole narrative. I don't just look at what they've done because I know that you haven't had many jobs. But uh, there was a couple of like uh, deep reading sessions that we did with individual professors where you would spend the entire semester reading one book page by page together. Oh. And, and those were some of my favorite because we were, we got maybe 20 pages into being in time and it was like the most fun I've ever had in my life. Um, so I think some of those classes are that process and as Ian was saying, some of the things that we miss and like, please do not take that for granted because as you get older, it gets very difficult to do that, but yeah. Um, okay, for the Zoom crowd too, we didn't repeat the question. Oh, uh, favorite, uh, favorite class, I guess. Can I add my favorite class? Yes, I loved history of music. I don't know if they teach it. They still teach it? Oh my God, Professor Gardner was our, he's re retired officially now, but yeah. uh, he's the reason I'm into opera. He made it accessible and fun and oh my God, love Don Giovanni. But, also, fourth year, uh, Kimberly Stratton taught the history of Satan. The history of Satan. I wrote my paper 
on deals with the devil in music. So like from Paganini to Robert Johnson. Oh my God, oh, cool. the coolest course. Just le learning about the devil and like you know popular culture and, and text. Yeah. Uh, because we're business people now, we have a keyword uh, call to actions, <laughs> CTAs, and I think we want to give you some CTAs to like start this process because you can start doing. Um, I was working a full time job, running a very large uh, tech publication, while in university, and it allowed me like the <laughs> the minute ish I graduated to uh, jump significantly higher in pay, pay scale and seniority because I had been putting in the time earlier. So we kind of want to open you up to alternatives to studying abroad for third year or things like that. And maybe this is where I throw to Ian. OK, um, well, part of what I do at Shopify is build learning programs. Um, and part of that is early talent. Um, so there's a few things I'll plug, and you can reach out to us if you're interested in them. Um, Shopify runs a number of internship programs. Um, there's intakes in January every year. Um, so that's an option. And there's, again, you can be an intern not in a technical field. If you have technical skills, great. Those are great internships. But there's also things like trust, legal, programming, education, um, mm -hmm. documentation, if you just want to write stuff, and manuals. Um, there's interns all over the business. So keep your eyes up for that. They usually go up on the careers page. But again, you can also just email us. Um, there's another really cool program that you might be interested in. This is called the Apprentice Product Manager Program. None of those words might mean anything to you. Um, but product is an area of technology that will take people from non-technical fields. Um, again, it's sometimes people from like maybe user research or business backgrounds. But it's, it's cool. It's again, it's about understanding value and making trade-offs. Um, and this is a really great pathway into that. Um, and it's basically like an apprenticeship within Shopify. So there's another option. Um, and then last, there's a referral program that we run, which means that like if Amanda and I give you a referral, um, it really makes a difference if you apply to anything that you look at. Um, so keep us in your network, and we will refer you. Put like a 10 super times out of 10. gold star next to that recommendation. Right? Yeah, no, ab absolutely. I mean, I would refer anybody who has a Hums degree to your earlier question. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Like if I know you or I didn't, um, if you reached out to me and you were from the program, um, I would definitely. Mm -hmm. make the referral so yeah and yeah. Amanda anything you want to add yeah and as like a talent specialist and also just someone that's like a career mentor and I know Ian would offer this too happy to review resumes yeah, LinkedIn totally. profiles give you advice um, we know how to sort of sell ourselves obviously but the idea is you already have amazing skills and backgrounds we just want to show you how to put it online in a way that's legible to people who maybe again don't know what the humanities is or you don't know what words to put up from your degree. So hit us up. We'll share our emails. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to just keep the connection going with this cohort who's graduating, but also the second, third, yeah. first years. Totally. Uh, OK, and then we have one final thing. Just underscore this message, because it, like, sincerely, it's the reason why we're here. We're, we're going to play like a 40-second video to just reinforce this, and then maybe put some context around why it's kind of insane. Yeah. Lee good. Yeah. Forty seconds. Before, yeah. You're wondering yeah. who the person is. Yes. <laughs> we'll give you context. Okay. So. Hey everyone, uh, Harley here. I'm an entrepreneur and the president of Shopify. I want to quickly take a moment to reach out and encourage all of you to consider joining Shopify when you graduate or for our next intern cohort. I think oftentimes people assume that you need to be a developer or an engineer to work for a tech company, but I can tell you firsthand there are so many roles here that require a very diverse range of skills. I think entrepreneurship in itself requires critical thinkers, people that want to solve big problems, people that are resourceful. And many of those skills you acquire as an arts major can actually have a really big impact. So hope you're all having a great day. And thank you for letting me drop in here quickly. And I look forward to seeing uh, you all apply. Have a great day. OK, so to reinforce that, that is the president of Canada's most valuable company who, when uh, I made the request to just Send a message to, to you, uh, said yes within like 10 minutes uh, to make this happen. This person also completely rejected me uh, to uh, be interviewed on stage earlier this week for the reason why I'm in Ottawa, which is like a, a, a large tech conference, which I, I think hopefully underscores like what he thought was important in you the two it. requests I made. Yeah. Um, and again, to be like as explicit as possible to not undervalue yourself or the capabilities that you have. Um, 
and thank you for letting us be here. It's, uh, it's awesome. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Thank you all so all right. thank, much for coming. And thank you, Zoom. Thank you Bye, for Zoom. watching. Have a good dinner.